Hey folks, welcome to another great lot of the Southwest. Very excited today for today's guest. He's a GLC favorite. He's also an internet sensation. None other than Model Battleston. How are you, Model? I'm doing fine. I'm glad to see everyone out there in GLC land. Listen, I get so many emails and appreciative notes passed on to me from the GLC studio from your viewers, and I deeply appreciate that. It's heartfelt. Uh, I recognize there's a family out there, not only in the Southwest, but also across the world, wherever GLC viewers are. Well, we appreciate you. And of course, those who gravitate to GLC, you know, I mean, God's learning channel. That's right. I like to learn. And you know what, what you offer uh, is, is context of scripture and historical yeah. context. It's so important to know. And and you know, folks, it's great to know the Greek words and the, you know, but you know what? How about the Hebraic context? And how about the surroundings of the actual places uh, that that history has unfolded with the Bible and the Bible stories and, of course, uh, the Torah? And you're even writing a book right now, Model. Uh, yes. It has to do with Jewish history. You know, as we go into the show, tell us a little bit about that. You know, I never fancied myself an author. I didn't show, choose to write this book, but um, a, a significant Christian publisher approached me about two years ago and actually requested that I write a book to explain to Christians the basics of what they need to know about Jewish history from the perspective of one who both loves Jewish history. I love Jewish history. I've been immersed in it all my life, uh, but also one who recognizes the Messiah of Israel, wow. Jesus, Yeshua. And uh, that is a unique perspective to have, and I believe Christians need to, to recognize the basics of Jewish history. Well, you know, it's so important, folks, that when, when you're listening or you're reading or you're, or you're preaching or teaching a, a story uh, from the Bible to know what the situation is and, That's what, right. and what it was, what the boots on the ground, so to speak, and context and knowing that context can literally change uh, or should I say enhance and reveal the true meaning of what was being said, especially by the Messiah, when you know what the customs, when you know what the, the right. history, when you know what the, the, the climate of, of the culture is. Imagine trying to tell somebody about uh, 21st century America and what's happening right now with our media and mm -hmm. and and uh, so many things with the, with, with the uh, attempted encroachment of communism you know if, if you didn't know the situation if you didn't know what the headlines were if you didn't know uh boots on the ground so to speak what it was it would be very very difficult to relay that uh 2000 years from now and i'm so grateful for you model now i know that your videos are among the most popular if not the most popular requested videos and watched on GLC as well as the different platforms uh, that Excellent. GLC is on with Roku and, and YouTube and, of course, uh, Facebook, and the list goes yeah. on and on. But for those of us who are intrigued and maybe for those who've never really understood what exactly is uh, the Hebraic context of the Bible or, or what's kind of the Jewish history 101, I'd be so honored if you would help walk us through some of that today. Well, I'm going to very simply assume this, that your viewers love the Lord Jesus, recognize that he is the Messiah. And that is my description as well. He is my Messiah. He is my Savior. However, he didn't drop out of the sky into a vanilla landscape. He came in a time and a place, and the time was first century Judea, the Jewish province of Judea. There was no such thing as Palestine. It's an artificial construct. Right. It hasn't been invented, invented by the Romans, by the way. Right. And so in first century Judea, all of your favorite Old Testament Bible heroes had something in common. They were waiting for the, the Messiah to come. And everyone was asking the question, when will the Messiah come? Uh, and uh, they, it became almost something that some people had given up hope. But yet the scriptures say in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a virgin, born under the law, that he might redeem us from the law. So Jesus shows up at just the time and place that the Jewish prophets said he would. You know, some people have said we need to unhitch from the Old Testament. It's not all that important. 
Well, if you unhitch from the Old Testament, that's the engine driving the train. <laughs> you're you're going to coast to a stop because you, you've got no roots. If right. you chop off the roots from a tree, the tree topples over. And so the Jewish roots of that Jesus was a Jew, he came into the world as the Jewish Messiah, but then he did something wonderful. He said, whosoever will may come. And so the doors were flung wide open so that every single person, whether you be a Native American in the Southwest, whether you be a New Englander catching lobsters, uh, which are prohibited in the, in the Old Testament, <laughs> all of those people are now genuinely, sincerely welcome into the family of God, because, not because of their own merit, but because of the sacrifice of Messiah Yeshua, Messiah Jesus. And so true biblical Christianity is the recognition that Jesus is the Messiah first promised to the Jewish people, sent on to the Jewish people growing up in a Jewish context, but he he's no respecter of persons. That's the headline here. He doesn't prefer one racial group over another, but he came to provide atonement from sin for whosoever comes to him in faith. That's the Jewish context of our New Testament Christian faith. You know, I'll never forget, Model, actually seeing a, a girl choose the Messiah based on the Hebraic context of the wedding. And, and, right. and when the Messiah said, I've gone to prepare a place that when I come back, there you may be also. Or, or you know, she chose him based on not sermons she had heard, uh, and in and, and all due respect, not some uh, trendy pop psychology downloaded sermon that morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> but she learned the true context of one of the stories and sayings of the Messiah. She chose him because she understood the context of that scripture. You know, as you're writing this exciting book about Jewish history that's going to help provide this context, uh, where, where is the starting place for most people? What, what perhaps might be the number one question that you are asked by people who are not familiar with the Jewish context? Basically, they would say, are you trying to convert me and make me Jewish? <laughs> that I get that as a surprising number of times. And my simple answer is, no, the only way for one to be converted is to come to faith in Jesus and when we do, if you were Italian beforehand, you'll still be Italian. If you were <laughs> Irish beforehand, you'll still be Irish. If you were a redneck beforehand, you're still going to be a redneck. <laughs> Listen, brother, there's nothing I can do about that. I was a Jew before. I'm still a Jew. God doesn't change our ethnic identity. And believing in Jesus does not, and this is controversial, you'll, you'll get pushback on this, but believing in Jesus does not make a person Jewish. No, it it makes a person a child of God. The, the body of Messiah are all people together, Jews and Gentiles, in this new entity called the one new man. People of every race, every tribe, every tongue. So no, we're not trying to make people Jewish. And GLC has not tried to do that. No. But... You can be a saved believer without knowing the important information that GLC is providing. However, may I suggest, again respectfully, that you're going to be a spiritual pauper. You're going to be poor in your faith because you'll not understand the most basic things that the apostles understood. The apostles had a common body of knowledge, and that body of knowledge came from their familiarity with the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament. Right. Too many believers do not have that most basic body of knowledge. So when they read about the exploits of Jesus and the apostles, it's kind of like, how? Why is this happening? Why did Jesus go to pass to Jerusalem for Passover? Because he wanted to? Because the hotel rates were low? <laughs> you know, why did he go? No, there's a reason why he went, and it's there in the Torah that says three times a year, you must appear before the Lord your God in the place he has chosen. So once you understand those Old Testament basics, 
so much more of the New Testament starts to make sense and hang together. You know, I love your balance, and it's so important, you know. Uh, you, you have people on this end of the spectrum that they care nothing about Jewish uh, history or context, right? Which a lot of us have preached about, you know, these stories in the Bible and, and the messages in them, you know, but because they don't know about the context and the history, they make the common mistakes. Well, Jesus was a Palestinian. No, there was no such thing as Palestine. That was by the Romans, named after the Philistines. They've never had their own country. They've never had their own currency. And there are no occupiers, but they, uh, because the land belongs to God's people, belongs to the Jews. Then you have on this extreme spectrum, people that will identify as Messianic. But, but they're so angry and they seem to hate anything that has to do with uh, Constantine and, and, and the church and don't even use the name of Jesus. It offends me. But then there are people who are balanced Ugh, and yeah. the balanced people, they know that he is the Messiah. You know, they know that he is Yeshua. He also answers to Jesus. Folks, my father was That's saved right. at the name, you know? That's right. Uh, and, and of course, those who, who have converted from Islam to Christianity, or to, to I, I wouldn't say Christianity, Jesus, uh, that's Issa or Issa. Mm -hmm. They pray to him, right? That's right. And so the balance that I love that you have, and, and, and I'm so thrilled, Model, that, that you are as popular as you are with GLC and online is, you, you come across as this loving, kind, wise, knowledgeable, understanding, person that is a, a, a Jew, which I have always loved uh, the Jews since I was a boy. It was just sure. seemed to be born in me. But you're able to take people where they are. And 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 instead of uh, being so abrasive, whether it's <laughs> apathetic or whether it's so angry that no one wants to hang around you, right? Uh, but you're able to, you're able to truly speak the truth in love. And for those of us who love the Messiah. Sure. We love to learn about what he experiences. That's him. right. And we love to learn about what he grew up in. And a dear friend, Malcolm Smith, he was very instrumental in the eighties. Uh, he grew up in the Holy land and was dressed in Bible clothes by people that, that knew the culture. He learned the first, uh, he's the first teacher I knew of in the eighties that the tongue Hebrew, the taught uh, Hebraic context and, and roots, mm -hmm. so to speak. But you know what? It's so refreshing that someone like you can love people as a Jew yeah. and, and meet us where we are in our place of knowledge and be able to pour that life-giving truth into our spirits, into your spirits, folks, because right. you love people because the love of the Messiah is in you. That's right. You know, um, none of us are finished products. Every single one of us is a work in progress. Um, I'm reminded of an, a very emotional time I had uh, back uh, around 2018, 2019. Each of those years, I had opportunity to do a month-long teaching trip in Germany. This is the nation of Germany, the nation that only <laughs> 70 years earlier had put to death 6 million innocent Jewish men, women, and children because they were Jews. And the question before the Jewish community, this is something I was I just finished um, editing a video on, it's going to be online very shortly. Are Christians responsible for the Holocaust? Did Christians cause the Holocaust? And uh, in Germany, I can't begin to tell you all of the people who came up to me very mm -hmm. emotionally. And these were young people, people in their 30s, 40s, who were not alive at the time of the Holocaust. And yet they felt compelled to apologize to me. Uh, neither of us were alive at the time of the Holocaust. Right. But because they were born-again Christians, because they were evangelicals, they truly took to heart the teaching of the Scripture to love God's people. And so they were very appreciative. I was there at, at their congregation to teach, but also carried that heavy burden. And I tried to assure them and say to them that God is no respecter of persons. We don't need to um, carry this endless 
sort of burden, but rather we need to put into action the love. So some evangelical Germans, what they do is they'll go to Israel, they'll volunteer, uh, they'll take six months out of their life, and they'll actually volunteer in Israel. Some volunteer wow. in nursing homes. They go to hospitals. They clean. They, they bring food to, to patients. They want to tangibly express to, especially to the Holocaust survivors there, the fact that there are German people today who genuinely love the Jewish people. And that's because, not because they're wonderful that these young Germans are so wonderful themselves, it's rather because of what God has done in their heart wow. to bring them to a place of repentance, a place mm. of opening their hearts. And when a true believer does this, I believe God will put within us a, a spirit of compassion and love for the Jewish people that will displace any nonsensical anti-Semitism, bigotry, those sorts of things. You know, when we allow God to, to work on our character, when we allow him to displace the bad ideas we grew up with, there are people who grew up as racists, but as they allow the love of Jesus to come into their hearts, God has replaced that with a love for all of those whom he loves. And that's the beautiful thing about our faith we, we invite the Spirit of God to do a new work within us, all of us, Jewish or Gentile, no matter whom. And love is the key because he said they will know his disciples by their right. big buildings and radio shows and magazines <laughs> and big campuses and videos and <laughs> campuses and mega churches and Starbucks and Disneyland and the rock concerts. No, by their love for one another. And all of those things can be great, man. But the enemy of the best is the good. A lot of yeah. good things you can do, folks. What's the best thing? To love one another. You know, Model, you are very kind and you're very gracious. Because one thing you did not mention, my friend, is that Hitler did cite some of the writings of Martin Luther, uh, the Jews and their lies. Yeah. And I'll never forget, you know, I was so proud to have a a Martin Luther replica ring that his wife designed for him. And I was sitting there in Studio B at GLC in 2009. And I was hearing for the first time that that a lot of his writings, and you know, Martin Luther had a bad day and he tweeted about it. It's just a, that tweet lasted a little longer than yes, it should yeah. have. And, yeah. and he, he wrote a volume of, of, of uh, writings of Jews and their lies. And unfortunately, with misunderstanding, uh, those publications were used uh, to to carry out the Holocaust. And it broke my heart as a Bible college grad. It bo broke my heart uh, that I did not know that. And I took that ring off and I threw it in the trash and I cried. But I was so glad that love was shown to me. And you know what? God uses us all in spite of ourselves. And we That's make right. mistakes and we have misconceptions too. And sometimes we've been raised with uh, worldviews that are not of the Lord, but aren't we glad that there's there's people like you, Model, and there's people uh, that that can show the love of the Messiah with understanding and patience, and bring us along, and know that that God will have His way, That's and right. we are to love one another and to do His work. Now, let me ask you this: mm -hmm. sure. what 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 is the reception uh, of the people in Israel when they know Germans are coming to? to minister to them? What what, what are, are the reactions that, that you're seeing or maybe not seeing? You know, very often it's a generational difference. The older folks tend to be a little bit more suspicious because, again, there are still some 70, 80,000 Holocaust survivors in Israel, uh, many of them in, in uncomfortable straits, and they were not so certain about this. But um, the newer generation uh, convinced them that these people were sincere. They were not there to force their religion on these Holocaust survivors. And after a few years, it became very obvious that there was a deep connection. These people served um, tirelessly as servants. Uh, this, these were volunteer positions. Typically, they're, they're getting room and board. They're getting uh, three hots and a cot at most. And that they flew there on their own dime. 
And uh, after a few years of this, these programs, even the older Israelis started to understand. And there are these these touching, poignant stories about these older Israelis who were born in Germany, maybe born in the 1930s, who were able to speak uh, German, who when this these programs first started uh, in the 18, 1980s, 1990s, would would hesitantly start to talk to these young people in German. And the tears would flow when both sides realized that there was nothing to be frightened of anymore. And uh, of course, now the, there are very strong ties between modern Germany and the nation of Israel. There is a big um, uh, trade back and forth in, in weapons uh, that try to curtail terrorism. Terrorism is a big uh, issue, uh, terrorists coming against Israel. And so Germany and Israel have cooperated on that. But there is a genuine openness uh, as never before. And so God can work in hearts, uh, even the most hardened heart. God can soften. <laughs> you know, he has his own blend of oil that softens up even hard, cold hearts. And that's the that's the beautiful picture you see there in Jeremiah, where he says, uh, just quoting from memory here, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Judah, with the people of, of Israel. It will not be like the covenant when I took them by the hand out of the land of Egypt, but this is my covenant. I will write my law on their hearts. You know, you can't write on stone without chiseling into stone. Right. But if a heart is soft and yielded to God, God can impress upon us what he wants us to hear. So it's a question, by the way, this doesn't end at the moment you get saved. Right. Brother, brother, we continue to need to have soft, yielded hearts right. to what the Lord is saying to us. Even, you know, even the two of us talking on Christian television here, we need to have yielded hearts as well, because God still talks to us as well. Sometimes we think we know <laughs> enough <laughs> and we're the experts, but we ain't. <laughs> we ain't. Well, we should all be teachable. That's you right. Know, because as long as we're alive, That's we should right. be learning. And, uh, you know, greatness, greatness happens in moments, folks. And, yeah. you know, uh, great moments. I, man, I always want to be teachable, you know. And there, there's a there's a freedom there when you don't have to be right about everything. Just show that's me the right. right way, no problem. You know, that's right. But, you know, and that then that we all need to to recognize that God wants to drop occasionally some truth bombs <laughs> into our very comfortable existence. And I think those bombs make more of an impression when when we think we know everything. Uh, all of a sudden, we 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 reel back and we say, "Wow, I." I was about to make a gigantic mistake before I, st I I listened for the voice of God. And I've experienced some of that. Even during my time leading a congregation, I led a, a Messianic Jewish congregation in the New York metro area for a while. Wow. And, you know, uh, I, when, when, I, when I started, I knew everything, of course. <laughs> I was God's gift to that congregation. Of course, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. And I, and I quickly... <laughs> I quickly realized how little I knew and how much I needed the Lord's help in leading a mess. You know, leading a Messianic Jewish congregation is, is a little tougher than leading your average, you know, ABC Baptist church. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd have to, I'd have to agree. You know, you talk about truth bombs and God uh, giving truth bombs. Well, you had a truth bomb uh, because were you not raised Jewish? And, and uh, I'm fascinated to hear how you came to faith. And, and you know, it, even ever, since I, ever since I told that story, in, in the past few months, I've learned much more about my background. I've done a deep dive on my genealogy, took out a subscription to one of these genealogy uh, websites, and I found something astonishing. I did not know this until three months ago. My great grandmother, her grandfather was a rabbi in Poland, wow. and I did not, I had no idea. I did not know that wow. until just three months ago. And wow. so wow. they were religious, 
And for them, um, it was mostly that of obligation. Mm -hmm. uh, Orthodox Judaism at that time, and all four of my grandparents come from traditional Orthodox Jewish homes in Eastern Europe. They were all born in the 1890s. Uh, but for them, the allegiance to tradition became paramount. And, you know, that, of course, it's the whole stereotype of, of you know, Tevye, the, the milkman singing tradition on Fiddle on the Roof. <laughs> and, tradition. And, and, <laughs> yes, and it's a beautiful song. Uh, but as much as that's become a stereotype for many folks, it actually was the case. And to this day, you will hear testimonies of Jewish people who have come to recognize Yeshua as Messiah, who will say almost one after the other, uh, I was wondering what all this allegiance to religious tradition did for me spiritually. It didn't seem to impact or change my heart uh, one way or the other. And so coming from a rather uh, sort of, it was not a, an Orthodox Jewish background. I keep having to correct folks. They they assume that it was an Orthodox background. It was not. My my father was the rebel in the family. He was the youngest of the three <laughs> children. He was the first one to go, ever go to college, graduate from college. He was a free thinker. My father was a card-carrying socialist. Uh, and these were the things that he thought would cure the world, make wow. everything equitable, bring in economic systems, that were equitable, and he became severely disillusioned by the late 60s when he realized that the Soviet system did not work. It was wow. operating on fear. And so, no, we weren't orthodox, but we were very loyal to Jewish tradition, wow. uh, enjoyed Jewish tradition, something I do to this very day, but recognize that allegiance to tradition only gets you so far. There's an element inside each person that's empty until we recognize that it's our distance from God. When we are distant from God, there is no thing that we can put in that hole that satisfies that God-shaped void within each one of us. That, that Socrates talked about that, didn't he? God yeah, saved hole in every heart. And that was one of the people throughout history who recognized that. In Yiddish, it was picked up, that same concept they talk about in Yiddish. I grew up with lots of Yiddish. Yiddish is the language of the Eastern European Jewish people. Right. You hear it on the uh, foot on the roof. But I, there's a concept in a Yiddish uh, a Jewish tradition called the Pintel Yid. Pintel Yid is that, that peace inside every Jewish person that longs for a connection with the God of Israel. And uh -huh. until you are face to face with him, uh, you are not satisfied by anything else. The Hasidim, uh, the ultra Orthodox, try to, to make that happen through ecstatic prayer, through a freestyle of prayer. And uh -huh. it's very sincere oftentimes. I don't, I don't denigrate it, I don't uh, put it down. But ultimately, the issue is one is still separated from God by sin. That's not something the Christian Bible invented. That's something we see first in the pages of the Jewish Old Testament, that our sin separates us from God. Well, again, Mono, I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's just refreshing your approach. I'm so excited to hear what's happening in Germany with people ministering to people they've never met before and, and right. vice versa being men, you know, that's the way to do it. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't knock down uh, uh, history. They haven't that's demolished right. all the concentration camps because they want to remember, right. but, but, and they also don't demonize themselves or, or, that's or right. what, but what they do is they remember and then they, in a redemptive way, <laughs> put love in action, literally, and I love the fact that your story, uh, you, that, that, you know, your, was your grandfather uh, in Poland uh, came to a knowledge of the truth that socialism and communism doesn't work. This, is, this is my father. My father came to a knowledge of the truth. Yeah. Here we go. I, Three, I, two, one. And your father came to a knowledge of the truth um, in Poland and, and, and 
look what what's happening now. You know, I, I don't know if you ever knew that the millions of people that are being impacted by his son uh, pointing people to the Messiah. To well, the uh, it is it is incredible to recognize that the words of Jesus when he said, you think I've come to bring peace, but I've actually come to bring a sword because I will divide families, father from son, mother from daughter. Right. Nowhere is this more prevalent than among Jewish families where one person has come to a saving knowledge of Messiah Yeshua. It often sets up a, a lot of family conflict. And so that's something that your viewers can be praying for, that uh, a lot of these new Jewish believers, people I'm discipling at any one time, I'm usually in the process of discipling two or three uh, relatively new Jewish believers, that they would recognize that we need to to stand firm for our faith, and yet at the same time, uh, retain a loving sort of outreach to our families, show up at family gatherings. If they're having a Pesach Seder, a Passover Seder, go. Uh, someone else is conducting it, that's fine, go. Be a member of the family. Show that your faith in Jesus as Messiah is not making you a renegade against the Jewish people, but rather is causing you to recognize the importance of these family ties. It can go a long way. Wow. And love goes the longest way, does it? I'll, yes. I'll, I'll never yes. forget Yuri, uh, who, who was a favorite at GLC for years. I got mm -hmm. to know Yuri and would record him in Studio B and, and get to know him. And, you know, Yuri, Yuri was Jewish and he, mm -hmm. he practiced Judaism. And he right. said, you know, Brent, and he gave me some wisdom. He was going through cancer treatments. No one knew about it at the time. But but he said, you tell me that Jesus loves me. He says, do you love me? And I said, yes, Yuri, I do. And he became a dear brother. Uh, the times I had the honor of working with him. And Excellent. you can see, still see his incredible teachings uh, on GLC. But you know, I don't know if you've ever met Yuri or not, Model. No, I've I've seen some of the ads for his uh, work on GLC, right. and you can learn from someone with that sort of background. I'm sure, and can. I'm I'm really thankful that yeah. GLC has exposed your viewers to that wide swash of uh, of uh, people who have something to share, something right. to enlighten us with because there's a lot of general revelation that's been right. shared around, and especially older Jewish people come with a perspective that is valuable. I, I used to have a, a, an atheist Jew that would, that would travel with me and play music with me and mm -hmm. a percussionist. And his name, uh, his name was Larry, an incredible man. I loved him so much, so funny, but he was really hurt. He was hurt. Uh, he was, had, had experienced some, some rejection and, and um, I don't know if it was all because he was Jewish, but he felt like it was. And I remember sitting next to him after years of being around him and loving on him. He knew that I loved him and he, he craved that presence of the Lord and worship. And I turned to him and I said, brother, you say you don't believe in God. And he kind of looks at me, you know, cause he always wanted to play with me in church. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, he said, uh, I said, do you believe in love? He said, yes. I said, do you believe that I love you? He said, yes. I said, then you believe in God because huh. God is love. And sometimes that's the place to start model. You know, every, every journey starts with one step. And um, although that doesn't get us into heaven, uh, recognizing the reality that, and it's what you just said is not something debatable. It's what the scriptures say, right? God is love. Uh, it's there in the epistles. And once we take that first step, you know, it's, it's the next step becomes easier. It's like a toddler, you know, they say, no, 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 I don't, I'm, I'm being held. I crawl. That's fine. I don't, I don't need this funny thing that's just on, uh, God gave me two hands and two feet for real. I'm going to use all four of them. But then they see their older brothers and sisters getting around a lot faster on, on just their feet. And so that first step, oh, that was okay. I think I'll take another one. <laughs> Right. It starts. It starts there. It starts with love. Don't despise you know the small things. That's that's what the <laughs> scriptures say. Do not despise the day of small things, because God's work in the hearts of the people. And this is my my general 
admonition to people watching. You know, God, you, if you have if you have loved ones and they're tough folk, they're you know tough nuts to crack. You know, it's going to take one step of love, one step of openness, that allows them to open their hearts just to crack to what the Lord is doing, and He's going to use believers who are yielded to Him. Yeah, it's tough sometimes. I I recognize that, but it all starts with that one step. And for a lot of my own Jewish people, the road to faith that Yeshua is Messiah starts with seeing someone like you, Brent, who is just kind, not judgmental, tries to meet people where they are, but says, there is a way, a pathway forward to God. Let me tell you what he did for me. And and you, no one can argue with your testimony. You can argue yeah. politics. You can argue theology. No one can argue your your experience, your testimony. Share your testimony. You the the person may say, ah, that's that's just what he did for you. But you know something? Two hours later, when you're separated, he's going to think, hmm, maybe that there's something there. And you know, God, one of the things I like is, about you, model is you're a master teacher, but you're also very personable and very kind. And sometimes we can get in the way of uh, having a profound truth that is undebatable, yeah. but our delivery <laughs> yeah. is not exactly the most <laughs> loving, right. you know? And, uh, you know, back in the day of the Jesus people, you know, we, we could joke about uh, hitting people over the head with the Bible, quote unquote, but love does go a long way. And there's times when that love will open the door and you do that beautifully. I, I would say as great of a teacher you are, you're just as great as just relating to people. And I bet you did a lot of that in New York. And I, I've got a question for you. Sure. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot if you don't mind, okay. because sure. I was asked this question. And of course, my favorite thing to talk about is the Messiah. I mm -hmm. love hearing the context, and I love, I love hearing about uh, uh, history and and getting a clear picture. But when he said he will bind up the brokenhearted, what does that really mean, man? And, and, and from from where you are standing in the in the historic and the and the and the Jewish uh, knowledge and context and wisdom. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to use th this good old fashioned Bible. It's actually printed on paper. Hey, those, all right. <laughs> for those of your younger viewers who only use it on their phones to answer your yeah. question. Turn it on your phone if you would. I did that the other day. <laughs> no, no. I'll, I'll turn to my leather-bound Bible here because your, your question is an excellent one. And I'm just going to answer from Scripture. And the verse here is Isaiah chapter 61. So this is written now 600 years before Jesus was born. Wow. And you and I didn't discuss this beforehand, but your question is specifically answered in Isaiah 61, where there is a prophecy about what the Messiah would accomplish when he came. I, I read better without my glasses. <laughs> so it says there, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. And the word anoint there in the Hebrew text is literally the word Mashiach, Messiah. He has messiahed me as used as a verb, because the, the Jehovah, whenever you see the word Lord, all in capital letters, the yud heh vav -Hey, it's the four letters of the Hebrew name of God, because Jehovah has messiahed me, the second person of the Godhead now assumes the office of Messiah, to do what? Verse 1, to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to proclaim freedom to prisoners, and the favorable year of the Lord. That's the passage that Jesus read in Luke chapter 4, when he was invited up to the podium in his hometown synagogue, and invited to give a little sermon. He opened up to Isaiah 61. He read just those words to the very first part of verse 2, and then he closed the scroll, and he said, today in your hearing, these verses are fulfilled. And immediately, a very Jewish thing happens in that synagogue. Mm. 
Mm. An argument breaks out. <laughs> he's the Messiah. No, he's not the Messiah. No, he's only the son of Joseph. He's only a, a poor Shmagegi. He grew up here in Nazareth. Nothing good comes out of our hometown. <laughs> so a Jewish argument breaks out. But the reality of what Jesus spoke are now going to be seen over the next three and a half years because he didn't start his ministry by going to the fancy people in Jerusalem. He started his ministry by going to the people who needed to have their wounds bound yeah. because they were broken hearted. Mm. They were called in, in Hebrew, there's a phrase, Am Haaretz, the people of the land. They were the simple, ordinary people of the land. Uh, they weren't the fancy educated Judeans down from uh, Jerusalem, but rather they were the people of the land, and he ministered to them as the Mashiach, as the Messiah, gave them the opportunity to welcome him as the anointed one, and to all, to whosoever did, as John chapter 1 tells us, to them he gave the ability to become the daughters and sons of God. And so it, he does a work in hearts that, you know, Brand for every individual, it's going to be slightly different. Everyone's got a different unstated need. You know, we feel comfortable stating our needs that are socially acceptable. But there are awful lot of lonely people these days, especially with this whole COVID business. Right. People who are at home and lonely and just feel disconnected from the world. Mm. And the community of believers was never meant to be broken up the way it is right now. And so Messiah can, can speak to that, and he can get us together with believers. Messiah can speak to, to women who are always told that, you know, you're, you're not attractive, you have no worth, no one's going to want you. Well, Messiah wants them, and the body of Messiah wants them. Uh, and so to each and every person, God can speak to hearts. And he speaks to all of our hearts. He spoke to mine. He broke through... Uh, uh, a sort of uh, cynicism that I was in in my early 20s uh, by doing a few uh, nifty little things that were not explainable by modern science. <laughs> and wow. I saw the opportunity that, yes, God was trying to speak to me. And then the cooperation, the evidence was in the pages of the scripture. And so God does speak to hearts. He still does, uh, maybe not in the sensational, miraculous showy things that happened in the Bible, but they're nonetheless miracles anyway, because they dramatically affect people. And uh, we need to recognize that God is still at work. He uses medium like even this, where you're connecting with people, some of whom are in their homes and scattered across the country, right. and it's really making an impact on people. And so if we allow the Lord to to really speak to our softened heart. If we yield, hardened, you know, this world hardens our hearts. We guard ourselves. We want to protect ourselves because we're not sure what people's intentions are, right. you know, and, but the Lord's intentions are always good. You know, I, I don't know how many, uh, and that was beautiful, by the way, and I love it. You've inspired me in a lot of ways today, model, and yeah. I, I don't know how many networks you're on or platforms you're on, but how important is it right now that stations like GLC or real TV station, five right. towers and five cities and, and so many platforms online as well. How important is it that we continue this fight against the prince of the power of the air and for a lot of people, people we can. Yeah, it, it is so true. And I say this from the depth of my heart. It's very sincere. I recently filmed a little uh, two or three minute promotional for GLC. It was not scripted. I, I started the camera. Uh, I had like two sentences of notes in front of me, but I spoke from my heart and, and I told the people that God uses a Christian ministry like GLC oftentimes to speak to people who have been disenfranchised by some of the mainstream Christian ministries. There's nothing wrong with most of them, right. uh, but you know, oftentimes, like you said, the showiness and uh, uh, the aspect of needing to impress people with, uh, with the eyes 
becomes paramount. You know, I've, I've seen the behind the scenes operation of GLC, and I can say to folks that uh, very sincerely that any contribution that you send to GLC is used wisely, uh, it's used very carefully, and it is used to push the gospel into people's hearts, to give them an opportunity. And I truly, very sincerely, of my own will, just made that video because I believe in what GLC is doing. I've seen the operation behind the scenes and folks who are very self-sacrificing, who give of their expertise. I mean, there are, there are a lot of uh, TV stations, that your, your head technician there, I won't mention his name just out of uh, modesty here, but his he would be uh, a prize, the prize employee for a lot of stations. But he chooses to to lend his talents to doing the work of the gospel. And so his ultimate real reward is going to be in heaven. Yes. And God bless him and his family. I've had the opportunity to meet his family. And uh, I've just very sincerely believe in what you're doing. The lineup of guests and of Bible teachers that you have, excellent, some unusual music. I'll even watch the Cowboy Church from time to time. <laughs> it's, it's a long way yeah. from where I grew up in Brooklyn. <laughs> you know, growing up in New York City, we didn't have no Cowboy Churches. But, <laughs> but you've got them on GLC. Right. And um, if that's your cup of tea, there's a good Cowboy Church for you on GLC. <laughs> but well, uh, I, I, I just I, appreciate the ministry. Well, we appreciate you, you know. I don't mind saying it, brother. Sometimes the worst place you can be, or the vile, most vile place you can be, is behind the scenes at a at, a, at a, a, some ministries or even some Christian TV ministries. But yeah. from the back to the front, it is pure, so wonderful. That's why that's why I volunteer my time. Yes, you yeah. see, you know, and when I encourage people to to give, uh, you know, folks, I don't need your money. I don't want your money, yeah. but I want them to have the resources they have. Yes, yeah as they selflessly make a stand in a culture where it's easier to just go with the flow. It's easier That's right. to not be a watchman on the wall, but there is a, a strict uh, a judgment for those watchmen on the wall who refuse to sound the trumpet, who refuse to, pe to preach the truth. There is a, a consequence for those uh, who, who have chosen the way of Balaam. And, and, and may have a Balaam's reward. But for those who stand the truth, uh, when they have everything to lose, but they have the kingdom to gain, it's important, folks, that we rally behind them with resources that, you know, you, you can spend $34 in the drive through at Wendy's, but that would, that would be one of the levels of giving for GLC, folks, for a whole month, you know? But we've yeah. got to stand and take the ground and to take dominion and I don't know about you, Model, but I just don't want our territory back. I want mm -hmm. the enemy's territory, too. I want his territory, too. Folks, if you notice you're watching GLC, you're seeing people from Hollywood, the music industry, who are, have come out and they're making a stand yeah. for the Messiah. And they choose him and they boldly speak for him. And that's exciting. And I tell you what, Model, I really couldn't be more excited about you than I am today. And as we wind down in our our final eight minutes. I, I just, I just want to encourage you. Uh, tell us what what are some ways we can get behind what model is doing right now. Well, here's here's a key thing. Th across your your viewership, there are people, there are believers there, who who may know Jewish folk, and oftentimes you may not be next door neighbors. But think for a second, your doctor, your dentist, your attorney. Your, your chiropractor, the college professor, where your kids go. Oftentimes in one of these professions, you'll often find a Jewish person. And it would be very simple for you to simply say to them, um, can, you, can you spare 15 minutes to watch my friend muddle? And, and have, the, have the URL, have the, the, the link preset in your, in your, in your um, phone or wherever it is, just Text to simply to show, them a, a, yeah, show them a video. You know, as I said before, you can argue theology from day to night, but when you see this punim, this face, punim is a Yiddish word for face. When you, <laughs> see, when you see this Yiddish punim, as we say in Yiddish, when you see my face, there's no arguing that one can be Jewish present tense and 
believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. And so there's only two ways to go. In Yiddish, I'm Meshugana, which means crazy, you know. <laughs> or is, is, is it Meshugana or Shugana? Meshugana. Meshugana. M-E-S-H. Meshugana. <laughs> so Meshugana is something, you know, you hear all the time in, in a Yiddish neighborhood. I heard it a lot. Sometimes it was thrown at me as an epithet. You know, you Meshugana, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> but either I'm Meshugana or the scriptures actually foretell the coming of a Messiah, and the only person in all of history who could have fit all of the prophecies, who was born of a virgin, that's what Isaiah says. It doesn't say young woman. The Hebrew text is very clear. Ama in Hebrew means virgin. He was born of a virgin. Uh, Daniel chapter 9 said he had to appear and then be killed before the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. The temple was destroyed in the year 70 A.D. What Jewish man came before 70 A.D., had all the other credentials, born of the house of David, that fit the requirements? There's only one person in history, and that is Jesus of Nazareth. And we we urge Jewish people to consider him. And these videos online, just not, not only my video, but if you put if you simply put my name into YouTube, you'll see various permutations of my testimony video. Some of them were filmed at the GLC studios with a fancy background of books. Uh, and there are many tools. Listen, folks, there is no excuse to say, well, I, I don't know how to share the gospel. Nowadays, it's very easy, but you need to be sincere in recognizing that God wants your friend to be saved. And the one way of salvation is to exercise personal, individual saving faith in Yeshua, in Jesus as your Messiah and Savior. And that goes for everyone equally, for Jew and Gentile alike. Music to my ears. You know, I I was talking to uh, to some Jewish friends and... uh, you know, I, I, I just thought about something. I, I thought, man, you know, the Passover is, it, it, isn't the, the Avakoman, the, the, uh, the piece of bread that was broken and in the middle and covered and, and you, the children go and find it and it was lost. Yeah. It's found. It, what, what is your concept? Is, is the Messiah, the Avakoman? Messiah is the middle matzah. He is the unleavened bread. He is the Avakoman in the modern Jewish Passover Seder, and I actually, in one of the GLC episodes on on my current show, it's Our Messiah is Jewish. That's the show you want to look for in GLC. All the others are good, but Our Messiah is Jewish. There is one of the episodes, probably two, I couldn't squeeze it all into one, so there's probably two episodes on Messiah in the Passover. Folks, right there, you have about an hour of teaching in detail on how Jesus is the greater Passover lamb and how he is seen in the actual physical elements of the Passover Seder, the three matzahs, uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, many items in the Pesach Seder, as we we say in Hebrew, uh, point to Messiah. Unmistakably, there's there's no logical alternative explanation. And I say that fully having studied it and reading the arguments against it. Um, Consider the reality that God has put in the middle of our Jewish people a witness of who the Messiah is at Passover time. It's an amazing study. Well, I know that I can't wait to see that. I'm just so thrilled. Now, this new book that you're writing, Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a title for that book yet? Well, um, the publishers asked me not to to reveal a title. I actually... I have a significant Jewish, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a significant uh, Messianic Jewish publisher Uh uh, who has uh, basically set out the parameters of the book, and I'm only about a year behind in writing it right now, (laughs) but I have a good, very good relationship with the editor, and uh, she is, uh, she is top notch, but it will be a real book, bound book, uh, uh, eventually it'll be, as well as uh, PDFs and that sort of thing. But here is here's the main thing. It talks about what Christians need to know about Jewish history, yes. Yes. Uh, the basics. 
probably 120 pages or so, but your viewers need to recognize that Christian history and Jewish history are actually intermeshed. Yes, they are. They're not two separate things. They're actually intertwined. History is history. That's right. <laughs> and in this world where so many are opposed to the God of the Scriptures, for Jews and Christians, this is our point of commonality, that we both hold up the God of the Hebrew Scriptures as the one true God against all of the false gods that this world creates. So Christians need to be much more aware of the most basics of Jewish history, and I'm hoping that this book will will uh, be a part of that. But right now, there are some excellent videos right on the GLC website. The, again, the program is Our Messiah is Jewish. Start with that Passover teaching, Messiah in the Passover, how the, the Jewish Passover service is seen in the sacrifice of Jesus. By the way, that's not a devotional it's a literal fulfillment. It's not allegorical. It's not a sermonette. It is the literal fulfillment of Passover. Model Baldison, so excited to have you again. Thank you so much for joining us on a lot of the Southwest and GLC. And be sure and catch him on YouTube, folks. Subscribe to his YouTube channel as well. Yes. You're going to see more from this guy. And again, brother, uh, just talking to you is is a breath of fresh air and and i'd love to call you a new friend and i want to that's great hear more and and show more people uh the truth of this messiah through our, our friend today thank you for joining us brother excellent god willing we'll, we'll meet up soon in uh, odessa texas at the studios of glc and yes, uh and and put those texts behind the work to to to, to hard work right. <laughs> we will folks thanks for watching We'll see you next time. Lord bless. Bye.